Am I wrong for threatening to kick my dad out of my wedding because he kept apologizing to his fiance whose birthday it was? My dad has been with Marissa for about two years and they just got engaged. I don't have much of a relationship with her as she isn't a pleasant person. I don't know Marissa's birthday and don't see why I would be expected to, but my wedding ended up falling on her birthday. When my dad found out the date, I could tell he was stressed. He says she has a lot of trauma and he feels so guilty spending her birthday at my wedding. I didn't say much and figured they could work it out. Well, my wedding was last weekend. I'm not sure if Marissa was upset or not. She is very stoic so I don't know, but my dad kept apologizing. When they first arrived and he came to see me in the bridal room, he brought her for some reason. And as they walked in, I could hear him say sorry and asking if she was okay. Right before the ceremony, he had her on his lap and... Ew! Ugh, gag! At my wedding, dad, no! Ugh! Right before the ceremony, he had her on his lap and was whispering, but I could hear it. He was saying he wished she would open her birthday presents and she was like, I just don't want to do it today. Then he said, what if she opens them and he buys new ones for the day they celebrate? Ugh, ew, this guy is so whipped for her. Then my grandma came over and tried to give her a gift and he was just so annoying about it. Final straw was during the reception. Marissa was complaining to my grandma how she hates chocolate cake. The only cake we had. And my dad took her in his arms and was asking if she wanted to go out later and get something and again apologized. I finally snapped and yelled at him, if my wedding was such a burden, take the child he is dating and get the fuck out. I meant because of her actions, there isn't really a big age gap. He looked horrified and I was like, well, go. My grandma immediately began to berate me that I am awful and he paid for the wedding. He asked if I really wanted him to go and I told him to either shut the fuck up about her birthday or go. He stayed but was cold the rest of the night and I heard Marissa and my grandma joking about how he should rip up the check he gave me for how I spoke to him. I don't know if I overreacted as he was just having empathy for his fiance. He's a whip. That's not empathy. He's whipped. I told my fiance I don't really want to marry her anymore. My 26 male fiance Sarah 24 female and I are set to get married in three months. We were visiting a botanical garden yesterday when Sarah pointed out a flower called the Arabian Jasmine, a little white flower with a nice scent. She said that her cousin Stephanie had those at her wedding. I asked if it was the same Stephanie that would be in attendance with her husband at our wedding, and she said it was. Sarah and Stephanie are apparently pretty close and she started telling me about Stephanie and her husband. At one point, she told me that Stephanie had actually cheated on her husband twice before they got married, and that the second time was a couple of months before the actual wedding. Her husband never found out. I asked her why she never told Stephanie's husband about what happened and she responded by saying it wasn't her circus and wasn't her monkeys. And that it's not a big of a deal anyways since they weren't married at the time. I've been thinking about what she said ever since. I consider cheating the ultimate worst betrayal in a relationship. Clearly my fiance doesn't think so since she said her cousin cheating wasn't that big of a deal since they weren't married. Would this mean that she thinks cheating on me right now wouldn't be that big of a deal since we aren't married yet? As a man, if I got cheated on by my partner, I hope someone who knew would tell me about it. I would heavily judge anyone who knew about it, didn't tell me, let me go on to marry the person that cheated on me, and attend my wedding as if nothing was wrong, like my fiancé did to her cousin's husband. About an hour ago, I texted my fiancé, I'm not sure if I can go forward with getting married, let's talk in person later tonight. She's been blowing up my phone with texts and missed calls ever since. I'm just going to tell her what I've said in this post when I see her. Today, my wife met my girlfriend. I, 32 male, am a widow. My wife passed away from pancreatic cancer five years ago. She was forced to leave behind our two kids, R, 10 male, and H, 7 male. My wife was the absolute light of my life. We were high school sweethearts, went to the same college, and got married after graduation. We were inseparable. Every day, I fell more in love with her. It was like my heart was living outside my body. When she passed, the amount of pain I was in was indescribable. I prayed to go to sleep and not wake up just so I could see her one last time. I contemplated meeting her, but every time I was ready, my kids would look at me. They had her face, her personality, her DNA. I couldn't leave them. They were all I had left of her. It took years before I was able to function normally again. I even quit my job and lived off of savings from her life insurance for about a year. I was half the dad I used to be and only a fraction of my former self. Two years after her passing, I decided enough was enough and I kicked myself into gear. I found a job in a different city, closer to my parents. I packed my kids up and I moved. Life was hard, but I kept chugging along and eventually I found some joy. A year after moving, I took a business trip to New York where I met my current girlfriend, Elle. While I acknowledged there was chemistry, I told her I was already married and she understood. However, a few months later, I had to go back to New York where we met up again. 
I let my guard down for the first time around her. Before I knew it, she was putting in a transfer from my home branch and moving to my city. I fell in love with her and asked her out a year ago next month. My kids adore her, and though she reminded them she will never take their mom's place, they love calling her Mama L. Today was the anniversary of my wife's passing, an extremely hard day for all of us. This morning, I walked into the living room to find Elle and my kids waiting for me. The kids were dressed in their church clothes with goofy smiles on their faces and bouquets in hand. Apparently, Elle came up with the idea of a picnic at my wife's grave, an idea that the boys loved as they enjoyed going to see their mom. While I was sleeping, they prepared food and flowers, then insisted on wearing their best clothes. I'll admit that I cried at the sight of them. I don't know how I got this lucky twice in a row. I wanted my wife to meet this amazing woman, so I asked Elle to come along, and she did. The day that I dread every year turned out to be a humbling reminder of the reason why I stayed on this planet. To my lovely wife, you can never be replaced, but she is good to me and she takes care of our kids like you would. Thank you for sending her to me. Stop! I'm gonna cry! I gotta end the video! I'm gonna cry! I'm gonna cry! Am I the arsehole for not taking down a video that was a gift from my best man? I have a sister that is six years older than me. And for years, my parents have cancelled on me last minute because of my sister. If I have a basketball game, it's always, oops, your sister doesn't feel like going. Or even I'm graduating and it's, sorry, your sister had a bad day at work. They have missed both major and minor events in my life because of my sister's meltdowns. So recently I met the love of my life and we decided to tie the knot. And from the beginning I told my parents that I was worried my sister would ruin another special event in my life. But my mum told me over and over again that don't worry that will not happen. On the day of my wedding I received a voicemail from my mum. She was basically telling me that my sister's dog was sick and she was upset. I can't lie, I was so hurt. The best man, however, he's a little bit of a joker. He took my phone and then went to my fiance and asked if he could post a video of our wedding on social media as a gift. And they said that they loved the idea. Basically, I had no idea about it until I got home. So we went straight to our honeymoon and our honeymoon was on this gorgeous lakeside cabin, but that meant that we had no phone service at all. But the post caption was, to my best friend, you're an amazing person even if their parents never showed up for them. The video was like a compilation of me with my partner's parents, me on the dance floor, cutting the cake. It was basically pictures where you would normally see both sets of parents. And if you think that's bad, it gets so much worse. The sound playing in the background of the video was the voicemail my mum had sent to me explaining why she couldn't come to the wedding and that she wasn't there because my sister's dog was sick. I kid you not, I came home a week later from hundreds of messages from family on both sides insisting that I take the video down. I was told that my sister hadn't stopped crying, my mum was refusing to leave the house, and I may be the arsehole here, but I didn't take it down when I got those messages. And I didn't call any of my family back right away. I just wanted to spend time with my new partner in my new house, and I waited for my vacation time at work to be over before I contacted anyone. My dad kept calling me and telling me that it was just a bad night for them and that they would make it up for not being at the wedding. My reply was, how do you expect to make it up? It was a once in a lifetime thing. And that they just kept choosing to ignore my feelings in the whole matter. And I told him that I would take the video down on the day that he made it up to me for missing my wedding. 